Wow. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. <laughs> The elephant back atop the tree. That is a beautiful piece of news beginning in North London. And of course, back home, Gorma here, of course, suffered their second defeat of the term. In Germany, in the Bundesliga, Bayern scored not two, not three, but eight goals. But could it be too little, too late? We delve into that shortly. And of course, we'll have a lawyer in studio to help break down the FKF constitution, what it means heading to the AGM, and of course the Sports Act 2013. It is not very easy for Athletics Kenya officials. And what does it mean for the sports landscape at large? Sporty Monday begins now. My name is Isaac Sula Tijan, and of course I have my panelists ready, raring to go with Steve Shitera to my immediate right. Steve? Uh, you see, uh, sometimes I talk, <laughs> sometimes you I keep, keep quiet. quiet. And um, I, I already talked and I told people that if there is a season that Arsenal will win the league, it is this one. Last season, clearly I told this year, Arsenal will not win the league. Mm -hmm. And they were eight points clear. They did not win it. So today, Pro Prophet Chitera today, today, without doubt. Today, I'm telling people, mm -hmm. if there is a season, mm -hmm. Arsenal will win the league, it is this season. Why am I saying that? Look at how those boys are playing. Look at how they are scoring. I was with Kianda on this set. Kianda complaining, oh, we need a striker. I told him the kind of play at Arsenal, mm -hmm. the kind of play that Ateta is employing does not need an out-and-out out striker. Look, mm -hmm. everyone is scoring. Mm -hmm. You cannot mark one person and say that uh, Tumeweza Arsenal. Mm -hmm. You mark uh, Kai Havertz, Saliba scores. You mark uh, Bukayo Saka, Martinelli scores. You mark Jojino, <laughs> uh, Declan Rice scores. Of course. So that is, and look at the game the, the, the boys are playing. Very young, tantalizing. <laughs> you, 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 you see, then look at your opponents, Liverpool and Manchester. I think uh, Liverpool had, had 21 uh, shots. On a goal. On goal, they Shitera. scored only one. Shitera. Wow, Shitera, okay, let the devil Shitera. come. I'm analyzing football. Shitera. It's okay, Shitera. but again, <laughs> as you analyze football, please check out the fixtures. They've not played against, the, like now, the top uh, five. Talk about Manchester United, that is their last game. Oh, oh, yeah. second. What happened in the first leg? Talk about, it's fine, that is, it was the first leg. Mpira Udunda, that is, we you didn't see, meet. You see Zita. Let's talk about Aston Zita. Villa. They haven't played with you Aston see Zita. Villa. They Arsenal. haven't played with Tottenham. Again, they're going to Etihad. You Play see, with what? You after see, after you the see, international break. You see Zita, you see Zita. The first, the Arsenal that we are experiencing now is more lethal than the Arsenal that was in the <laughs> first leg. <laughs> that Arsenal beat Manchester City Gituku three goals. That's a very good I'll, agree, I'll, I'll, I'll not agree with Gituku uh -huh. because Arsenal beat Manchester City in the first leg. Uh -huh. It's a fact. You're always wrong. Uh, Manchester, Manchester City mm -hmm. give it to Arsenal at this point. They will be demolished. I'm just and I'm talking with authority. <laughs> okay. They have two I I'm talking with authority. We'll be getting that pantry tree in a short I'm talking while, with authority. Let's see what is here. How yes. are you today, sir? I'm fine. You, you see, um, the language of uh, this gentleman has changed. <laughs> since he saw the light. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Because he playing tonight. No, 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 not seeing the light. Just a moment. You see, I, I, I'm saying hi to Kenyans. I started by saying, <laughs> I started by saying, is here, I analyze football. And I cannot tell you that this is brown when it is red when it is red now relax I'm, 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 to, I'm, I'm a realist i need to remind people that uh Shitera, your chelsea is playing tonight no chelsea Castro, so don't don't appear to be running away from home no 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 i what can't a brother no no i can't run a, Except that I, you I are can't blue. and you see now and you see now that London is the, changed the, it and you see red. now that that is the problem that's the first when, thing. When, <laughs> when, when, when you see you have it, now pride checks Will it. I say hi to Kenyans this morning? <laughs> so Please do 30 seconds. <laughs> so, uh, you see, baby, pride is here. There, there, there was uh, a lot in the weekend, of course. Mm -hmm. That was uh, something to enjoy. Uh, yesterday, that was tantalizing football, as Mohamed Juma Juguna would call it, mm -hmm. Man City and uh, Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, most of the people were expecting from the Ghana's corner, it ended up in a draw, which now means uh, the elephant <laughs> is back at the top. It was sweet to, to behold that. But uh, Swila, like you mentioned, um, we are again faced with um, sports going back to the courts. As we speak, uh, 
our athletics, uh, Kenya, one of the most successful federations in our country, mm. is in trouble. We don't know how long this uh, storm will blow over them, and uh, we hope there is going to be a solution. But again, uh, I'm happy to do we are discussing, and we have uh, somebody to help us understand. Really, the conflict that arises from the Sports Act 2013 and how it can be helped, you know, because law is not supposed to to be to make you a slave. It's supposed to help you live well. Mm -hmm. And our federations have always found themselves in a conflict with the with the uh, with, with the with the law. With the law. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are asking: Is it that the federations don't want to comply, or is it that the law? It's not applicable. It's not applicable. And that's where we start the show. And to the question of the day, we go back to London and we're asking you, it's a three-horse race between the Gunners, the Citizens, and the Reds. Who will have the final say? Who do you think will win the 2023-2024 EPL title and why between those three teams, the Arsenal, the Gunners, that is Liverpool, and Manchester City? Start Xing, SMS lines open, 22422, hashtag Sporty Monday. Let's keep the conversation going. And of course, we promise you today, we are going to sample your feedback. Back home, and of course, uh, Isia has brought it, the roadmap to FKF elections. And we are set for the AGM this coming Saturday, right here in Nairobi. Probably Isia will stick with you. Maybe, uh, what's your prediction heading to this AGM? And of course, the branches will be there, the FKF members, and this should basically give us a clear roadmap to the eagerly awaited elections. Rightly put, because uh, Swila, as you say, you see our politicians, politicians always remind us that uh, an election is a process. It is not an event. And therefore, some of those uh, activities within the process really are so key to what happens finally, the product we get out of the election. And so you say that uh, the AGM is coming up on 16th, um, this coming weekend, and the issue is that the delegates are going to be debating one, the electoral code that has been proposed to be used, the 2021. And uh, when some of those uh, issues are brought there, maybe some of them will be passed with amendments. Others, it's possible that they are going to remain the way they are. They will mean a lot as far as uh, the election is concerned. Why? For example, there's a quite important area, which is the eligibility criteria of the, of the candidates. That one, of course, is going to mean whether some of the aspirants so far are going to be eventual candidates and participate or not. It's also going to change the formation. You have seen some of the people talking about, uh, you know, if so-and-so does not go all the way, then I'll be backing them. Mm. So whatever happens during the AGM that could change the whole matrix of the aspirants, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, will be very uh, critical for, for this election. Mm -hmm. Number two is to talk about the idea of, um, of uh, the board that is going to be constituted to, to run the election. Mm -hmm. Again, it's going to be discussed there. Mm -hmm. So it's basically to say that uh, the outcome of the AGM if there's going to be key issues to be discussed that are going to be amended from the electoral code of 2020, then it's going to give us like a, some picture of what we expect finally uh, from, from the election. Uh, Shitera, mm. of course, we know there are candidates who've cleared, uh, not just the candidates, contestants, yeah. who've shown interest in this election, but it's the question of eligibility criteria. Mm. Um, I think uh, the eligibility, yes, uh, it's a factor that will be brought in uh, by the uh the code of 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 co conduct but again where i sit uh, uh let's not fear anyone mm -hmm. yeah let's not fear anyone put everyone on the table mm -hmm. uh, let it be decided but again unfortunately uh the fkf elections uh, has been left uh, to a certain club eh, to make the decisions mm -hmm. for millions of kenyans and i think uh, we really need to change uh, that direction, that football is for Kenyans. And let Kenyans choose their, their football president. But we have left it to a group of uh, people. Uh, it's like a, a club of uh, certain uh, decision makers who make decisions for the rest of us. So yes, we are going into it uh, with the same uh, election uh, code, I think 2020. Uh, which gives powers to, uh, power to clubs 
to elect their president. And you see, 94 votes for a person who has money, it's easy to manipulate them. Mm. And that is where our Kenyan uh, football problems emanate. Because uh, we, 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 we support a candidate based on what we will get at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I will invest my money mm -hmm. into it, mm -hmm. yeah? Knowing that when a certain candidate uh, is elected, I will benefit in this direction. So in my view, the whole process, <coughs> if you asked me, mm -hmm. the election of football in Kenya should be open to Kenyans mm -hmm. or uh, football lovers. Look at it this way. You have Premier League clubs, NSL club, uh, both men and women. But where are you leaving the fans, mm -hmm. the biggest stakeholder in football? The biggest stakeholder. Uh Stakeholder in football, Shitera says, and of course now we are joined in studio by one Robert Asembo. He's an advocate of the High Court in Kenya, and of course the former Vice President of Football Kenya Federation, at one point an official of AFC Leopard. So he's a stakeholder, he, is under, he understands the game, and he's here to shed light on the FKF elections roadmap. Buon Asembo, karibu sana. Asante sana. Mm -hmm. How have you been? Well, and you? We are well, as you can see. Congrats for being the new editor. Asante sana. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get it uh, going, uh, Banasembo. The FKF elections, may I call it conundrum or whichever way you want, but of course we've seen some candidates, rather contestants, cry foul. Maybe take us through what is expected as we go to the AGM this Saturday. Yeah, thanks. First of all, the AGM is supposed to be the source of the roadmap the clear uh, what is to happen to us a full election. It should uh, elect the electoral board. It should give the powers of the neck to uh, you know, put everything in place to us election, including what will be the secretariat. Mm -hmm. So the AGM is a member's occasion when they all come there together and say, this is what we must do to us the election. So I believe there's an electoral code in place I don't know what is the specific agenda of the AGM. An AGM must have an agenda, their standard agenda in the AGM, like uh, books of accounts, yeah, annual reports from the federation leadership. But when we are facing an election, and it's not an electoral AGM, then it means that now we must prepare for a proper day of elections. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, what must be one of the agenda specific for this AGM is that they must put in place an electoral committee or board mm -hmm. uh, that will serve the rest of the independence role of how do you put in place leadership through an independent mechanism of those executive who are already in, mm -hmm. uh, serving the federation. G good point you're raising, putting in place an independent electoral board. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure this above board and that contestants do not cry foul? Swiller does not say Zeta influenced this process that Assembo had an interest in this and therefore we are not going to uh, um, uh, appear before this board, which we feel is probably uh, slanted towards a particular candidate. Yeah, you know, Swiller is always a controversy because on one hand, there's a responsibility to constitute the board, mm -hmm. which is by the AGM and led by the executive. So one may clearly not see that there's, a, there's no hand of the executive or, or the membership of the AGM and many of them will be interested parties. By the end of the day, there's the mandate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you must form. It's like even in the national level, the president must appoint the chair of the IBC and the commissioners after recruitment uh, process. After a rigorous yes, uh, a recruitment, recruitment process by right. selection panel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who appoints the selection panel? That's the question. Mm -hmm. So we go to this FKF election, and there's a mandate of the NEC, there's the mandate of the AGM members, will attend, then now the board itself is one which will create more transparency and more democracy, depending on what methodology they use to have the elections. Mm -hmm. For example, the electoral board may decide that they're not reached by the, themselves, they'll hire IBC at the end of it all. Mm -hmm. So that will, again will, I mean, adapt some form of more responsibility, more transparency and more democracy. Mm -hmm. Call it right there, Zita, maybe you can hear from you before we go to the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on these uh, elections? Um, I think uh, because we are having the, this weekend the, what, the AGM, mm -hmm. which is going to give us, as he has said, the roadmap to the election. 
Um, and uh, the only thing that I want, as, as I want, let the constitution be what the, the, the uh, sports act and the constitution be respected. Mm. That is the only thing I can say because as if we respect that, we'll go to the, in the in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And those and the people who are being um, selected to go and what and vote, I know he says it's going to take us through that. Please just vote as in, with the interest of the sports here in Kenya, the football here in Kenya, because a lot of people are being uh, have been saying, why is it Arambe is not doing well? Why is it? But again, it's start from the leaders, from the leaders going down. Mm -hmm. So those people who are being given mandate to go and vote, they're the people who are going to determine the future of football here in Kenya. The future of football, and of course, Jacob is here. He is on standby at the scoreboard. Jacob, what do you have? Yes, indeed. The talk that uh, has just uh, started there is about the AGM. And indeed, what is important is uh, looking at some of the issues ambazo ni muhimusana for all people to understand going to even the, the AGM is going to be one of uh, the key issues that are going to you know, give us a roadmap for, for, the, for the election. AGM is uh, coming up on uh, 16th March, and uh, the election, as uh, well put before, is uh, uh, primed for October 2024. Now, that... The FKEF has proposed that the electoral code for 2020 uh, be used in the polls for this year. And uh, one of the issues really in the, in the code then is the idea of the eligibility of the candidates. Uh, goes well saying that uh, the, those who are going to be vying for the office of the president are supposed to be, uh, even vice president, are supposed to be Kenyans, of course, over 18 years. And uh, maybe we'll be looking at this later and know, because they always say that the devil is in the detail, whether this idea of citizenship you know, what about a dual citizen older? You know, American, Kenyan, UK, Kenyan. Each candidate shall have uh, been active in football, uh, registered as a referee, a coach, a trainer, or administrator, at least for the three years uh, before this exercise. Uh, quite another interesting point there. Uh, then that uh, each candidate shall present uh, declarations of support from all, you know, uh, at least five members of the eligible voters as uh, laid out there. And uh, this one becomes another key issue because you look at it and you wonder, uh, of course, if you have so many aspirants coming for it and one person is supposed to endorse at least one candidate, then what happens as far as getting those endorsements is concerned? Because one person can only endorse uh, one party. Then uh, being proposed as a candidate by a member, of course, shall be understood as a declaration of, of support uh, for that one person, of course, meaning that you cannot endorse another person. Um, uh, all these uh, certifications by the relevant bodies are required. Uh, clearances from the ESC, CRB, uh, and uh, KRA, of course. Then look at this, quite interesting, that uh, these are the votes that people will be talking about. And I had Shitera raise a very interesting uh, point there, that who owns the game? And uh, it's debatable, really, whether the fans have a stake in this or it's supposed to be left to the people who are involved directly with the game. Now, 18 clubs from uh, FKFPL, then the aspirants also will also be knowing that uh, who interacts more with these clubs today, even before the elections, because, uh, of course, the current office, for example, is more involved with these people, uh, you know, when it comes to the voting. The NSL clubs are supposed to be voting, 10 of them by the end of the league how they have been, you know, the, the ranking by 10 of them, the best 10 will be voting. Then Division 1 uh, clubs, they are going to be voting uh, at the end of the season, again, considering their position. Uh, we have the Women Premier League uh, top three clubs. Uh, people will be debating really whether there is fairness in that when it comes to the number of uh, women clubs that are voting, uh, considering they are also in the top league. Women Super League, again, uh, just two votes. You see the, the, the Premier League is just three. Well, KEFWA, this is the body that uh, looks into the welfare of the players in this country. They have just uh, one vote. They will be considered. Then we have the referees association. They will be having one vote also. The, the coaches association one vote also. Then this one is another interesting part that the counties now with the formation of the you know FKF administration through the counties they are going to have 48 votes. Explained well that Nairobi being a very broad region as far as football is concerned in Kenya, we have two sides, the east and the west, and therefore we have two votes instead of 47. We end up having uh, 48. So some of the people who are contesting for this will be talking really to those stakeholders. Now, you have a total of 94 votes that will be up for grabs. Essentially, uh, the person who will be going to become the next FKF president really will have to have talked well to these 94, at least to get uh, the majority uh, number of votes. The idea being, uh, should the game be decided only by 94 or not? Quite a contentious uh, debate there. Uh, probably I'll jump in. Quite interesting 
perspective you bring there before probably you go into the sports act i would want uh, wakili to come in there and robert you've seen what is he has uh, brought down so clearly on the scoreboard help us understand the issue of uh, nationality or citizenship we've known there are persons who've declared interest in this they haven't been cleared with the board yet which is yet to be constituted but it's talking of a kenyan citizen what's of the question of dual citizenship does it arise or it's neither here nor there i think it's not unique to football or peculiar uh, many of these uh, serious government positions and national leadership positions we require single citizenship we don't give room for dual citizenship because we don't want you to have divided loyalty you know when you want to advance kenya's cause uh, on the world stage of football we don't need to be divided on your loyalty as a dual citizen. So I believe the question of Kenyan citizenship must stand and it's imperative because we want a Kenyan dedicated, loyal, and divided in attention to serving Kenya. Interesting. Zit is itching to go, but <laughs> let me ask you again. Uh, we had this some time back, and you saw uh, a lawyer, Miguna Miguna. He wasn't running for public office, at least when he was... Uh, uh, deported, quote unquote, to Canada. And he said, a citizen by birth, you can't lose that. Then you look at some of the constitutional office holders, Rosalina Combe, Dr. Combe, pre previously serving at uh, IBC. IBC. But she, even, she, but she held a dual citizenship, Kenya and America. You go to parliament, we have several parliamentarians who also hold dual citizenship. How but, do you? But even uh, Miguna Miguna was cleared to run for governor. In Nairobi? Yeah. I want to say that there are matters which are of national interest and we must look at it in that prism. Mm -hmm. You cannot have everything be open to dual citizens. They'll have their place, they'll have their privileged positions, some matters, they'll play some role. But when it comes to top leadership, I don't think we can even have a president who is of a dual citizenship uh, orientation. So I think for Kenyan football, I support the ideology that we should not have a dual citizen as the president of FKF. That's my position. But don't you think now this now will derail the process because uh, they have a window of argument and uh, they might take this matter to court because uh, an election here is an election for the Kenyan football. And I have a priority because now uh, my citizenship, my Kenyan citizenship will uh, give me a through pass now, drop the other dual Shitera, citizen. I'll ask you, will you vote for a dual citizen or a singular citizen? I will vote, I will vote for the best manifesto. <laughs> um, I, I, as just as Shitera has asked, I have another question about the, uh, the, same, the same place whereby they are talking about uh, that someone should be active um, in football, football for yeah. almost three years. Mm -hmm. Like active in football, is it only in, you have been active in football in, in Kenya, Kenya, knowing what is yeah, going not, on in yeah, Kenya, not clear. or just anywhere? Active because at the end of it, you, you've said a referee, active football, uh, being a coach, being a referee, being a what, being uh, in administration, like in, anywhere or just in Kenya? Because as much, if you tell me anywhere, it means that, do you know anything about Kenyan football? Because if you can vote from, if you, we can vote anyone who has been maybe, Spain leader or someone? I think for me, uh, when we frame these, uh, you know, qualifications and disqualifications, mm -hmm. what should worry a person is the disqualifications. Mm -hmm. Qualifications usually are meant just to create uh, some level of, you know, stakeholder interest so that you don't just wake up and you go and say, I want to lead football. So it's a sort of checking, you know, balancing do you really are interested in the, in the game of football? So that's not the, it's not about even about the number of years or uh, what have you been doing, but it's there at least to show that whoever comes forward mm -hmm. in the game has had an association with the game, rather than leaving it open to every, every Tom, Dick and Harry. Just a second before, before, you, before um, I go, I just want to ask about the, uh, the numbers of women who are voters in the coming election. Because as you can see, you've said uh, three are represented from what women football. Women, uh, knowing uh, that, of course, yes. they're not going to be, mm. are they going to be women? Or, or is it going to be just women football that is being owned by a man who is coming to uh, vote there? No, actually, is, I think is, uh, the thing is, Zita, within the Women Premier League, the top three 
clubs, clubs at that point in yes. time. Yeah. So each club holds one vote. Uh, Asembo can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And in voting, it's either the club chairman or the club secretary general, if yeah. I'm right. Yeah. yeah. So are they women? Because I'm trying to mm -hmm. see. But they represent okay. women. They represent they women, represent yes. Women. But again, there's interest. You need to have a slot whereby, let's say, these, at these 47 representative, let's say 10 of them must be women. You know, you have to, because it's not only about a, a man's team. It has to be, a, a, you have to involve even women there because we have a women Premier League in need think, that. So I we have to have a number, not even like, even a separate number of, we need to have 10 women voting for this, coming to vote for this. I think Rita wants to have... Uh you know, at least one third as yeah. Yeah. <laughs> out of the 94 no, delegates. It's, yeah, it's, it's out of the interest. Yeah, out I love of, football. But, I but you see, see. I, I, I will attempt to yeah. respond in the interest I, of time. I, 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 I will tag a question there, but again, I will uh, want to uh, uh, commend the current uh, leadership because we have a woman vice president. So at, at least your case is solved <laughs> at that. But okay. Wakili. <laughs> uh, all this uh, code of conduct we are talking about, the 2020 code of conduct it will be brought before members yes. who might brought an amendment to it. I don't think it's final. Yes, you know, no law is cast in stone. Even the Kenyan constitution we passed uh, in 2020, 2010, we need to amend it. Uh, people just ask, is it when or uh, for, I mean, the main question is when should we do the, the amendment? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the Sports Act itself, it has lots of issues since 2013 when it came into effect. I mean, even here, the government them itself say they need to amend some of the, of, the, of the provisions. So same with the electoral code. It can be amended on the floor of the AGM. So we'll what matters is the process. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we'll be looking towards that AGM and, of course, amendments on the floor, if any, but still staying with matters law, Athletics Kenya, Things are not very good there after the court ruled that the current leadership must exit office, exit rather from office after holding the leadership for more than eight years. Uh, Sembo, probably that's our next uh, point of 